Welcome on into the Thursday edition of Wager Talk Extra. I'm your host, Dan Alexander, alongside my guest, reminding you no matter what sport you're cashing in on, that money all spends the same. And we're going to be talking a little combat sports edition here with a little sprinkle of soccer. Why not? Kevin Dolan coming on talking a team he likes to get relegated in the EPL. He's got a boxing play as well in this Jake Paul and Nate Diaz fight. And then we're going to be talking some UFC fight night with Kyle Anthony. But Kevin, let's get into it first. You're eyeing some relegation potential at some nice plus money in the EPL. Where are we going, Kev? Yeah, it's that time of the year again, Dan. Thankfully, no more trying to pronounce names from the Swedish lower leagues <laughs> or you. Chinese Super League and so on for us. The big boys are finally back. Brutal. Um, and in fact, a good few European leagues are already back. You know, English lower league action kicks off this weekend as well. So stoppage time is returning 10 a.m. Eastern next Tuesday. Make sure and tune into that as we'll be giving out a ton of free futures on that show as well. But I'm going to give a look ahead future, which I'll be giving out in that show on this show right now. Um, as you said, a relegation future that I really like uh, for this season. I like it. So so who are we? I, I can't believe the EPL is back already, but thank God that I don't have to try and pronounce Sviviskana Skanagard anymore. <laughs> and I can just enjoy names like Wolves. And why do you think that they're going to be struggling this season, Kev? Well, this is a play that I fired on last season as well, plus 500, Dan. Um, you know, Wolves to get relegated. The lame was originally this season opened up plus 400 still liked it when the lines got released uh roughly six weeks ago it's since been cut into plus 300 right now um that's because of the de departures we've seen in the roster you know nathan collins has left the club he was one of their brightest young defenders Raul jimenez their former top scorer ruben neves and um, their former captain and so on uh, as they look to kind of balance the books and while they have brought in some replacements uh, it hasn't been nearly enough you know to satisfy manager uh, Julian Lopetegui, supposedly, you know, because of that, there's been some friction in the off season as to what the board are willing to spend and what he wants to have. So, you know, speaking of Lopetegui, as I said last season, I faded Wolves of five to one. They finished, you know, top ten in the league back in the 2021-2022 season, but that was a complete smoke and mirror season for Wolves. You know, they ranked bottom four in expected points that year. And, you know, when I bet them last year, it initially looked brilliant. You know, uh, they were sitting bottom of the league on December 1st. But, you know, mm -hmm. they managed to bring in uh, Lopetegui, you know, former Europa League winner, obviously, to steady the ship, galvanize the squad. And his experience proved enough to lift Wolves off the bottom of the table last season. Um, in fact, they were ranked as the eighth best team in the league between December 1st and March 1st. So, you know, that initial shine, though, and the reason that I like them to go down um, this season is because, you know, no team in the league, look, he gave them that new manager bounce, but no team in the league had a lower expected points tally than Wolves to close out last season from March 1st on. So yeah. I believe this team is in serious trouble ahead of this year. You know, wranglings between the manager and the board. They brought in no real big signings in the door either. And while the odds have obviously been, you know, clipped in somewhat from the price I got them at six weeks ago, I still think plus 300 is decent enough um, as I expect Wolves to really struggle this year going back to the well on wolves getting the boot trying to get home that three to one ticket for you kevin dolan wt.buzz slash kd kevin let's uh let's also swing it on in to the ring and while a lot of people have things to say about jake paul and i'm probably one of them is the guy a boxer is he this is he that he takes on nate diaz and this is a a huge fight because the one thing you can't deny is the master promotion that you get out of Jake Paul. It always seems like the numbers do well. People are always interested. But I'm wondering, how are you going to be breaking this fight down? Well, you know, there's only one man who could possibly follow up on that electric week of boxing we enjoyed last week, Dan. You know, the Disney prince yeah. himself, Jake Paul. Uh, <laughs> as you said, he's a master promotion. It's going to be hard to top last week. Uh, probably one of the best weeks in boxing I've witnessed in at least a decade, to be honest, two Hall of Fame level performances from Nguyen and Terence Crawford, respectively. Mm -hmm. So can Jake Paul live up to those same standards said last week? Uh, highly doubtful. But look, you mentioned at the top of the show, it doesn't matter. Quality aside, a Jake Paul ticket cash is the same as a Terence Crawford ticket um, when you walk out of the window. So uh, yeah, there is a, a, a spot I do like uh, in this weekend's fight between uh, Paul and Diaz. 
Yeah, and these are two guys that you love to hate. You know what I mean? So I feel like anyone who's watching this fight just hopes one of these guys gets knocked out or at least TKO. Do you see that happening in this one, or is it maybe a points play for you? I do see someone getting stopped, to be fair. You know, look, mm. this this is this is quite obvious. When it comes to MMA, I'm a complete casual. You know, I show up with my Guinness, yep. my green jersey, whenever my boy Conor McGregor <laughs> steps into the octagon, which hasn't <laughs> been for a while, it must be said. But uh, beyond that little else, but I did find something puzzling this week because, you know, I heard a lot of people talk about Nate Diaz, a stand-up game, you know, his, his supposed boxing skills. Um but from those two Conor McGregor performances, I, you know, I didn't see any, you know, no movement, you know, off the hips when he's throwing shots. He's He doesn't turn into his punches. He doesn't sit up with the jab, you know, like leaning into that lead foot, the generative force. You know, it was literally just him throwing the most basic straights and uppercuts in those two fights. Um, so I thought, look, I thought maybe I missed something with him. I'll go back over his career, went back and reviewed his fight against Stun Gun. Uh, his win against Michael Johnson as well, and so on. A few other fights, and I still don't see any boxing skills from Nate Diaz, so I'm not sure what these uh, people are talking about, to be honest. We all know he's obviously an incredibly tough guy. His cardio, his mm. relentlessness, um, you know, pretty much legendary at this point, but I believe he's really going to struggle in this fight. You know, I think Jake Paul is by far the more seasoned boxer of the two in this one. Uh, you know, he's got he's got a decent judgment of range. He can put his combinations together well upstairs, downstairs. You know, he's got that devastating overhand right as well. I think he's been leaning on that one punch a bit too heavily across his last few fights. You know, Tommy Fury could uh, read that one quite well, as well as Anderson Silva, uh, as well as Anderson Silva. But nonetheless, you know, I think Jake Paul's going to start pacing up Nate Diaz's face early in this one, given the golf and boxing fundamentals for me. And to me, that's key here. You know, don't necessarily picture a stoppage. You know, when, when people say Jake Paul by KO. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, Jake Paul landed a monster overhand right, putting Nate mm -hmm. Diaz to sleep. Uh, you know, could happen, I suppose, but, you know, unlikely. I think it's much more likely in this fight that Jake Paul starts masking up Nate Diaz's face. We know he's been cutting fights before, and this isn't UFC. You know, if blood is deemed to be an impediment to a fighter's vision in boxing, nine times out of ten, the fight gets stopped. So... I think this one will be pretty one-sided on Saturday. I believe there's a big gulf in boxing talent, as I said. And I believe Jake Paul will start carving up that face in eight days to such a point that I do believe the fight eventually gets waved off in the middle rounds due to, <laughs> due to Nate Diaz basically being not able to see. So, yeah, I'm quite happy to take a piece of the Jake Paul to win by KOTQ uh, prop this weekend at minus 135. Yeah, it does seem like, uh, you know, we used to do that There Will Be Blood segment with our man Andy Lang. Uh, th this seems like, especially with Nate Diaz, it was always the lock that Nate Diaz was going to bleed. That bleeding may turn into a stoppage, says our man Kevin Dolan. And, Kev, I can't believe it's football season already. And, yes, we talked about football with the Wolves, but I'm talking football on the <laughs> gridiron. Hall of Fame game going tonight, and you've got a great special because – People might not realize it, but the Irishman, when he talks college football and also a little NFL, you better be listening. CFB free. Tell the folks what that's all about, Kev. We all, the college football season generally always starts in Ireland. We're huge fans uh, over my <laughs> side of the Atlantic. So, uh, yeah, code CFB free, CFB F R E E. Still active until August 13th. Uh, gets my entire college football season for absolutely free. Um, when you pick up my NFL and CFB early per package over my page together. Number two CFB totals handicap are all time at wager talks to start in five years ago and number two in total NFL profit since November 1st as well. So obviously great time to jump on board, you know, as you said, because college football just yep. three weeks away. Yeah, I can't believe it. And it's always a good bet to take the over on good information you'll get from Kevin Dolan when he joins us here on Wager Talk Extra. Kev, always a pleasure. Can't wait to see you on stoppage time. And if you want some more information, don't go anywhere because Kyle Anthony's breaking down UFC fight night right after this here on Wager Talk Extra. Welcome on back here to Wager Talk Extra. Time for a little UFC to end the week. And for that, we turn to the UFC expert cashing in 12 units last weekend in UFC 291. And he's here with some free play winners for you. Let's start off with the main event here for UFC Fight Night, Kyle. And uh, it's a catchweight one. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you're breaking this one down. Sanhagen and Font, what are you eyeing? 
Yeah, so here we got Corey Sanhagen, a wide favorite, minus 350, roughly, depending where you're shopping it. Come back here on Rob Font is going to be roughly, again, around the plus 260 mark. Now, we were supposed to get Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Nurmagomedov, an absolutely incredible fight. No one really wanted to fight Umar. Corey had stepped up. He wanted to take that fight falls apart. We at least do have a main event. Rob Funk comes in here on short notice, but you look at Corey Sanhagen, well-rounded guy, good striking overall on the feet, on the ground. The guy can do it all. On the other side here, though, you have Rob Funk who, listen, this guy's got fantastic boxing, uh, you know, great jab, a lot of good things that he does do well. But looking at really the issue here for Rob Funk, which probably most people are going to be discussing, when you're talking about this fight, he's limited arsenal of weapons. Now, he does have elite level boxing, all of those things. He's a top fighter. All of those things are great, but he just doesn't throw enough kicks. He doesn't mix it up as much. It really is a one-dimensional type of fighter. And when you're looking at Corey Sanhagen, he brings it all to you. He's got all kinds of different stance switching where he comes from orthodox to southpaw he mixes it up very well hard to kind of he basically disguises a lot of his shots by switching from stance to stance he's a versatile striker he'll hit to the legs the body the head and the one thing that he does very well mixing in some of these takedowns he's starting to really elevate that within his game having the opportunity to get these takedowns get the control time now even if he doesn't get the takedowns, I really do believe it does help just in general giving Corey and giving actually Rob different looks, things to worry about. He already has elite level stand up. I think this is really going to mix things up for him. Corey, the more explosive guy overall, I think that really makes a lot of sense once you're kind of looking at how this goes, plus the boxing range, you know. Bond's going to want to be in boxing range. He's going to want to stand there. He's going to want to throw. He's going to want to work outside, come back inside. And the issue there for him, again, is going to be the great kicking arsenal of Corey Sanhagen. It's going to be tougher mm. to cut that distance, get inside some of those kicks, work his boxing. And again, I don't really see where he finds success there. Now, the other issue for me here is probably going to be the durability. Now, there's no doubt about it that Rob Font is a guy that is tough to put away, but we have seen over the last two fights, he took mass or two losses. He took massive amounts of damage from Jose Aldo and Marlon Marais. I mean, these were 50, 45, basically fights dominating the, the, the stand-up game. You know, he was rocked, wobbled, knocked down multiple times over those two fights. And that started to tilt people really away from Rob Font. And I completely get that. The durability was there. He made it to the final bell, took a beating but made it there his next fight was against adrian Yanez, which rob came in on uh you know as a dog plus 150 it was a client play plus 150 he goes out there and this is a stylistically a great fight for him so people kind of look at that fight and they were really off rob but he goes out there Yanez is more of a you know boxing heavy approach green fighter definitely has some ability when he's going to move up um you know throughout his career but Rob Font went out there and outboxed him, outlanded him, landed nice shots, finished him in the first round because it was more of a boxing type of fight. This is a situation where that's not he's not going to have that luxury in this spot. Corey's going to have a lot more of the tools, a lot more of the weapons, a lot more of the opportunities to go out there, get that finish, or at least get this fight dominant over the throughout the five rounds. But that's really how I look at this fight. I do think this goes actually five rounds. Rob Font has only been finished one time in his professional career with a submission. He's got six losses yes this is short notice yes there is a case so that does help him to drain himself down as much but when you're looking at it here i mean short notice 36 years old um taking a lot of damage over his last few fights stepping in on short notice has limited arsenal of weapons i like Corey sanhagen i think it goes out there gets the job done and i think that bot can last i think he goes out there and he goes out gets the job done via points Plus 80, I think it's the opportunity. Good plus number, getting off that minus 350. I think he gets the job done. Corey Sanhagen, via points, plus 180. Going the distance, getting the points. So uh, the people who are uh, getting this fight for free are getting their money's worth because we're going to get all five rounds here in the championship or, or, in, or in the uh, main event five-round yeah. fight here. And then we're going to get the decision. I like it. I like the breakdown there from a man, Kyle Anthony. All right, let's swing it on to another fight that you're excited to watch. Let us know which one it is and why you're looking forward to it. Yeah, so in this fight here, you've got Billy Quarantello, minus 175. In the comeback here, you've got uh, Damian Jackson, plus 145. Now, both of these guys are action guys. They're going to move forward, but also... 
both of these guys were brutally knocked out in their last fight. If you look at Damon Jackson, he had a four-fight win streak, looking good, getting submissions, getting that control time, utilizing that wrestling, but he went up against Dan Ige, got knocked out back in January, and then you look at, you know, uh, Billy Q, Billy Q, you know, alternating wins and losses back and forth, asked for and was really begging for a fight against Edson said, not many people want to do that with the ability of, of Edson Barbosa, but he goes up there, said, I want to fight him. He pushes forward, pushes forward, and gets absolutely knocked out by a jumping knee flatline. Now, the issue here is that this was only three months ago. This was not a long time ago. I think that is slightly an issue here, coming back so quickly, three months later, fighting. It's not that Jackson is a heavy hitter, but again, that's a quick turnaround time for him. But you look at what Billy Q does good. Obviously, he is fantastic with his cardio, pressure, moving forward, the volume, all of those things he's really able to do to keep stepping forward. He'll always kind of keep his opponent on the back foot. And again, the volume. The volume is so big for him that that really how he has kind of, you know, you know, differentiated himself just by going out there and utilizing, weaponizing that cardio. Now, the issue here is the fact that he can be taken down. He can be taken down. He has had issues with that. Now, he is a BJJ guy. He's got jujitsu. He's got ability. If the fight does go down there, he can scramble. But there is no doubt that Damon Jackson is going to sell out for these takedowns. He is going to push for them. He is going to look for the level changes. He is going to look for that control time. And I don't think he's going to want to stand and bang at all with um, uh, Billy Q when you're looking at this spot. Now, if they're going to be striking, I do lean Billy Q to have the better striking and, and have the ability out there to, to go out and land some shots and, and do those kinds of things. But there's times where he's a little bit herky-jerky. He kind of sells out himself for this volume and this pressing forward, where I think if he's crashing forward, that's going to leave opportunity for Damon Jackson to level change, find opportunities to get that control time. And I think also a lot of people look at Damon Jackson as this like, older guy and, and Billy Q is this young up and comer. They're both the same age. They're both 34 years old. I know mm -hmm. there's this youthful youthfulness to Billy Q, but he's, you know, this is a show me spot for him. So in this spot here, I think Damon Jackson goes out there, gets the control time, gets the opportunity to bank two rounds. It may not be the sexiest kind of finish there, but I think he can go out, control the action, get the shot. So I do like Damon Jackson plus one 45, a good spot. I think it's kind of a pick 'em here. It should be. So I'm taking the dog money. I like Damon Jackson plus 145 to get the job done. We always love the plus money our man Kyle Anthony brings on here. And his clients have loved the fact that he's been cashing in on eight of the last 11 UFC events. And you got a 4% best bet up now, but that also comes with an entire package of plays. Tell the folks about that, Kyle. Yes, you can check it out, wagertalk.com. Now, uh, got another, you know, we're coming off a lot of plus money, and that's always great when we can mm -hmm. find those opportunities. We never push for it, but when there's value there, boy, we love it. This week, no different. Four plays currently right now. All of them are at plus money. Love these spots. Probably going to add a fifth play before uh, it all tips off on, on, uh, on Saturday, but love it. Let's get the job done, and uh, looking forward to cashing. I love it. That's Kyle Anthony. Check him out. WT.buzz slash KA. And that does it for us. We got you soccer action, boxing action in that Jake Paul fight. Now you're ready to go for UFC as well. Big thanks to Kevin Dolan and Kyle Anthony. That does it for another week here on Wager Talk Extra. But you don't have to go anywhere for more actionable info. Stay right here on Wager Talk TV.